now we come to the last type of filter on the basis of filter uh, frequency selection the classification that we did on the basis of frequency selection uh, low pass high pass band pass band reject and finally we come to all pass filter as the name suggests it passes all frequency components of the input signal without attenuation while providing predictable phase shifts for different frequencies of the input signal now uh, this is where we actually need to focus because apparently the name is all pass and uh, filter classification based on frequency now if all the frequencies are passed what is the need for filter there arises a question that's an obvious question that uh, if all the frequencies are passed as it is then what is the need for such a filter because otherwise the signals are already moving ahead but here if you just pay a little attention they are passed without attenuation so they are passing a por portion of um, their transmission without being attenuated so they, that the amplitude of the input and output to this filter will be same that has to be kept in mind so somewhere the uh, form of the signal is being maintained and secondly we are intentionally producing some phase shift into the signal because there will be predictable phase shifts how we do that we'll come to, uh, to it later but this is where uh, the most important focus comes in because now we actually create some phase shifts between the input and the output signal so we'll move a signal to a certain phase by uh, with the help of this filter so th these are basically all pass filter is uh, the definition wise it stands to be this that it has passes all frequency components of the input signal without attenuation and pr pr provides predictable phase shift now why do we need this filter when signals are transmitted over transmission lines any transmission line that we uh, in communications that we see or uh, from one end to another and uh, signals are being transmitted they undergo change in phase because as they are traveling the there is change in phase to compensate for these phase changes all pass filters are required all pass filters are also called delay equalizers and phase correctors there are other two names obviously depending upon the type of work they do delay equalizers because that is uh, this phase shift uh, introducing the phase shift is basically equalizing the delay so delay equalizers and the second thing is the required phase is brought in so that is why we can call it phase corrector also next we come to the basic construction of it or the circuit of it uh, here if you see the input signal is being applied to both the uh, input terminals of the op amp as in the difference amplifier we do rf and r1 are kept kept to be same and uh, here at the non inverting input the there is this rc network so this is basically rc network is creating the phase delay as we know that uh, rc uh, uh, phase shift filters we have studied in passive filters earlier or you may have come across it earlier rc phase shifters um, one section of rc introduces around 60 degrees of phase shift from input to output so this is how uh, actually rc being applied over here is one of the ways of producing uh, or introducing the phase delay now if you look at it how do we analyze this circuit the input is up being applied to both the uh, input terminals inverting as well as non inverting so we'll find out the output voltage uh, by applying superposition theorem now for superposition theorem the basic uh, principle is that we have to consider one input at a time considering the other is not there the one source at a time so the source is being connected to both the terminals so we'll find out the output for input at one terminal at a time so uh, going by the first one that is uh, suppose the first input is uh, inverting terminal so we are considering the non inverting is not connected at all so input is being applied and the signal is being fed through this and the output is appearing so what is the output for uh, inverting amplifier in that case because in that case we are assuming that this is grounded in inverting amplifier we know that the output is minus of rf by r1 times v in input signal applied now rf by r1 both are equal so minus of rf by r1 is minus 1 over here 
times v in so basically the output will be minus of v in so this is the first term that we obtain okay next is if you see the second input that is now we assume that inverting terminal is grounded and uh, non inverting the input is applied to the non inverting input terminal so the voltage across the non inverting input terminal is the voltage that is developing across the capacitor c at this point v1 that we normally say so v1 will be what as per the voltage divider rule it is the voltage that is developing across the capacitor with the total uh, impedance being uh, r and c in series so the voltage divider will be there and times what the gain of the amplifier for non inverting amplifier the gain is 1 plus rf by r1 so the gain for rf uh, over here rf and r1 is same so it is 1 plus 1 that is 2 okay so that is why the voltage across c divided by the total impedance that is being offered times input voltage times the gain that will be the output for non inverting the when the input is applied at the non inverting end so minus jxc divided by r minus jxc this is the voltage divider method wise we are saying times v in should be the input times 2 because uh, the gain is 1 plus rf by r1 that is 2 so this is the output voltage expression for output voltage that we obtain here obviously we know that uh, minus j means 1 upon j and minus of jxc is 1 by 2 pi fc uh, that is 1 upon omega c that normally say, we say the reactance of capacitor now we not if we just uh, simplify actually equation 1 putting the values of minus jxc then we will get v in is uh, v naught is equal to v in divided by 1 plus 2 divided by j2 pi f r c plus 1 so this is 1 plus 2 the whole denominator will be 1 plus j2 pi f r c so if you look uh, further simplify this then we will get the v naught by v n that is now v n is brought on the LHS now we get v naught by v n is equal to 1 minus j2 pi f r c divided by 1 plus j2 pi f r c now the j terms are usually for the phase terms the uh, imaginary part of a complex number so that way is we can say that if we look at the magnitude it's 1 on this side and uh, in denominator also 1 so the amplitude which is the scalar quantity sorry the scalar quantity amplitude of v naught by v, uh, vn will be 1 as per the equation 3 okay now we come to the uh, phase relation between the input and output the phase shift between v naught and vn is given by phi which is minus of 2 tan inverse 2 pi f r c now here phi is the phase angle in degrees and f is in hertz r is in ohms c in farads so this is all in si unit and if you look at this figure the this is voltage against the phase angle and the bold line is the input and the dashed line is the uh, output so if you look when the input is at 90 degrees only then the output starts so the phase difference or the relation between them is the phi is 90 degrees and uh, one thing has to be kept in mind if in the circuit r and c are interchanged then in that case the relation between v naught and v win will be positive that means the output voltage will lead the input voltage so this is how we actually if you look at this equation 4 we are introducing phi on the basis of rc so depending upon the value of rc we can actually fix up the phase relation between an input and output so the desirable or the predictable phase shift that we were talking about can be introduced in this manner 
so this is all about all pass filters and uh, the review questions for this lecture is what is the need of an all pass filter obtain the relation between input and output voltages of an all pass filter state the expression of phase shift between input and output voltages of an uh, all pass filter and the last one comes in as a design like uh, we are given uh, that r is equal to 15.9 kilo ohm c is 0 0.01 microfarad and in a in an all pass filter and the phase angle for an input frequency we have to find out when the frequency is 1 kilohertz so you are supposed to find out phi for given r and c and the frequency is already given for our particular condition so please try it out whether you have been able to understand what has been said in this lecture the basic idea of all pass filter the purpose the circuit and how we introduce phase uh, shifts between input and output signals so this is all for now thank you